Hey everybody, welcome to GGS Railways. My name is Greg, this is my YouTube channel. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about some Marks 10 Litho uh, diesel engines and the sets that they came with. Uh, but before we get started with that, uh, to all of our subscribers, hello, welcome back. Thank you for returning. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, we appreciate you uh, watching our videos, the uh, thumbs ups, the uh, comments, the suggestions. Uh, you guys are the lifeblood of this uh, channel and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you very, very much. Uh, to all of you that have not yet subscribed, uh, you might want to do that. Uh, <laughs> I'll say it just like I've said it uh, many times before. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? All right, with no further ado, let's get this video started. Okay, before we get into the nitty gritty of everything, let's talk about what this is and what it isn't. Um, Marks was a toy company. Uh, unlike Lionel, they made many, many, many toys and things, and their mission was to give toys that the average person could afford. Now, as opposed to Lionel, that was strictly a train company. Uh, so to compare the two would be unfair. <laughs> How's that for a word? Unfair. You'll notice that the, the marks, it's, it, is, it is 10, and the, the images are printed on here. You know, there's no way in the world that anybody is going to mistake this for a real train. Uh, just not going to happen. You know, they're, they're toys. They're brightly colored toys. Children love them. I love them. I'll, be, <laughs> I'll just tell you right now, that's, that's not a real popular sentiment. Sometimes among a bunch of uh, model railroads with it, the ultra-realistic whatever, these... These aren't pretending to be anything, guys. These are just simply fun. And you know what? To me, that's what it's all about. It's fun. I would love, <laughs> I would love someday to find somebody with a just like ultra realistic, uh, super detailed layout and run these guys on it. <laughs> that, would, that would make my day. <laughs> so, all right, let's get this camera zoomed in. We'll take a little closer look at what we got and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we have the Marks 10 Litho Diesel sets here. And this is basically what you would get in each set. Um, first off, we have the Baltimore and Ohio, the number 62, that's this guy here. And then this orange guy is a 6000 Southern Pacific set. And I'll just come clean before any of my Marks guys bust me on it. <laughs> uh, while the uh, caboose that came with the set would have been the same size, the seven inch cars. This would not have been the caboose that came with this set. It would have been a Southern caboose, not nickel plate. So, all right, I came clean. How about that? So, okay. So these guys are engineered in a way that to me is pretty ingenious. And I'm going to show you that here in just a moment. Uh, I need to get a, get a towel laid down here. Uh, one thing about these tin litho is you don't want to do anything to scratch them because once you scratch it, well, as you can see, it's scratched and there's not a lot you can do about it. Uh, it's the image is lithographed on there and you are stuck with that scratch forever. So, all right. So I'm going to disconnect this guy just for sakes of showing you and I'm going to move this guy over a little bit. So you'll notice that this has a screw on the top and I'm telling you this, this is ingenious. This is, this is typical of Mark's uh, ingenious engineering that for, for making a toy that everybody can afford this, this is amazing. So, all right. So the actual drive for this train is right here. And you saw I took that screw out and this guy, <laughs> this, this is the power plant for this Mark's diesel. It's a single reduction motor and it simply screws in here on the top and uh, when you put the motor back in, you notice there's a, there's a slot here and there's a piece of curved metal right here. And this guy simply rides on that screw and pivots here. That is freaking ingenious. Ingenious, ingenious, ingenious. So there are several reasons why Collectors don't like these sets. Like I said, they're they're easily damaged, and if you damage it, there's not not a lot you can do about it. Uh, you'll notice that that this guy here is, is bent. That that's the damage that 
or you know some damage in a way that there's no way to fix it because it's 10 it's just you're stuck with it uh oh well that was another story but i guess i'll tell it now i was on ebay once and i wanted one of these one of these uh baltimore and ohio uh, uh 10 litho diesels really really bad i had had this guy and i found those all day long but i couldn't find the baltimore in ohio so i finally found one and it was at a cost i could afford i didn't notice that it was up here and there's a sweet little old lady that <laughs> listed. She goes, I can't keep the motor in, but otherwise it seems okay. I don't even know what this goes to, but yeah, it doesn't go to this. So I just kind of keep this, keep this around as kind of a reminder. <laughs> Look at those pictures close. All right, so one of the other reasons that collectors don't really favor these, I mean, beyond the, it's, you know, cartoonish, which I kind of like, I like cartoons. <laughs> Um, even for, for, you know, just avid, well, let me see, that's not a good example. For avid Marks collectors, these seven inch four wheel cars were not, not up very many people's alley. Uh, a lot of these have been converted to where they have the, the trucks and the, and the eight wheels. Uh, these tend to want to come off the track pretty easily. Just you can imagine because of the geometry. Um, so a lot of, a lot of collectors don't don't really favor these seven inch cars. As a matter of fact, uh, Marks didn't make these for just a terribly, terribly long time. They, they weren't really good sellers. So yeah, the other reason that, or one of the other reasons that, you know, a lot of people that are into the hobby of model railroading, true model railroading, don't care for these as much is because, and I'm gonna try to do this in a way that looks cool, but doesn't damage anything. This, is the Lionel offering from about the same time. And uh, if you see any resemblance at all, <laughs> then you're better than I am. I mean, I have a pretty good imagination, which brings me to a good point. You know, in order to have fun with and enjoy these, you had to have a good imagination because I mean, otherwise, you know, it simply doesn't really look like a train. It's, it's kind of a concept of a, an idea of what a, a train would look like, you know, in Cartoonville. I'm just gonna say it like that. So, all right. One of the things that is really cool about these is they run really, really well. Now, the problem with these that I found anyway is the track that they would have come with would have been like the 027 track. And these guys are super, super light. So, and they like to run really, really fast. So if you had the 027 track, they would oftentimes just tip over it you know, the drop of a pen. Now I have the wider radius track in there and these guys are freaking awesome on that track. And I'll show you here in a minute. Let's go do it. Okay, so uh, I guess the first first thing we'll do is we're gonna run the uh, Baltimore and Ohio number uh, 62. Uh, it looks beautiful on the track. That blue is absolutely stunning. Uh, once again, <laughs> I had lusted after this set for quite a while before I could find one that that I could fit into my price range. And uh, anyway, this is the, the set more or less that it would have come with. Um, if these aren't the exact cars, well, just pardon me on that. <laughs> but this, this is basically what you would have gotten. Uh, you would have gotten two, two freight cars and a caboose along with the, with the uh, A and B unit for the, for the diesel. So, and this isn't exactly the right caboose. Uh, it's got the wrong, the wrong uh, couplers, but it is it is a representation of what it would have come with, and it looks identical. So once again, these are the the uh, pardon me. These are the seven-inch cars, and once again, they were not really wildly popular because they tend to not want to stay on the track very well and a tight curve. And once again, these kind of came with the well, they did come with the 027 track, so that was a relatively tight curve. This is a super wide radius, and here in a minute I'll show you that this train runs really, really well on this track. Uh, I guess uh, the only thing left to do is to run it, right? <laughs> let's do it. All right, so let's get this started and see how it runs around this track. Now, disclaimer, this train has no sounds, no special features. It does have a headlight. Uh, <laughs> other than that, it's pretty plain Jane.
it really zips around this wide radius track. Southern 6000 set, um, it's very much like the other set. Uh, it does not have a matching caboose, however. Uh, incidentally, that uh, the uh, Baltimore and Ohio, that caboose I had, I told you that it wasn't exactly the right one. Those are extremely, <laughs> extremely difficult to find. So anyway, all right. So this set would have come with basically the same, the same, uh, same freight cars but of course the caboose is different. Now I've had problems with this particular uh, box car right here and we may wind up switching out to the other one. This one does not roll very well. It does the the uh, typical, uh, the reason that people didn't like the seven inch cars, it likes to come off the track. Even on this wide radius, it likes to come off the track. And then last but not least, uh, once again, the the uh, caboose that is not correct. <laughs> it would have been the Southern caboose. It would not have been the uh, Nickel plate, but we don't have that just yet. So, all right, now comes the part I think that everybody's been waiting on. Let's get this train going and let's just see. All right, so yes, I did wind up having to replace <laughs> that box car. I didn't even make it one time around the track on the other one. So let's try this again. Okay, everybody, this has been the Mark 6000 10 Litho Diesel uh, from the 1950s. Uh, I think regardless of uh, how you might think of it, I think we can all agree that it looks really, really awesome running around this track. It makes my heart happy. I hope it makes your heart happy too. Now, I would say that, you know, clearly this is not a model train. Uh, this is something where you have to use your imagination and I'm okay with that. Uh, I think it looks pretty awesome. I, I enjoy it. Uh, there's not a time that I've ever run this that it didn't make me smile or, or make me feel happy. So, I mean, that's worth a lot. So, all right, guys, I think I'm going to call this it for this video. Um, if you liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. That's how we know you guys liked it. Uh, if you're not yet a subscriber, uh, go ahead and subscribe. You don't really want to miss uh, shenanigans like this now, do you? <laughs> Shenanigans has kind of become the buzzword for my channel, and I'm okay with that. I'm totally on board with that. All right, with no further ado, I'm going to be quiet now. I'm going to let this train run a few more laps around the track, and then we're going to call this it. GTS Railways out.